Court TV has obtained more video in the case of Alexi Treviso, the then teenage mom who allegedly dumped her newborn in a hospital trash can is facing charges. We now have recordings made by detectives interviewing the staff there at the general hospital where Alexi was being treated. This was months after the baby was found that these interviews happened. Treviso, who was 19 years old at the time, has been charged with first degree murder and tampering with evidence. She has been released while awaiting trial. Let's look at those interviews here. Detectives are talking to what the charge nurse said about finding the newborn in the trash. It was a regular night. The, the, I remember she came in with back pain and they had put her in, uh, they were gonna treat her in triage one um, with some um, regular medications for back pain. Uh, but after the doctor examined her, she was a little concerned, I think, because of her heart rate and some other things. So she wanted to move her into a room and do a more extensive workup, which is what they did. At that point, I don't really know uh, anything because she, she's taken out, you know, she's not really my patient. Okay. So I know that Chris had her. Um, I know that he, he came to me and said there were some issues because they had ran a pregnancy test on her and they found out she was pregnant and she was adamant, the mother was in the room with her and was adamant that he was dying to... Did you see that? Or did it was... No, Chris came, Chris came to me and told me this was what was going on because we were having an issue. Okay. And he was worried about the mother... The, the dynamics between the mother and the daughter because um, the daughter was completely denying she was pregnant and the mother was relatively upset about that she was pregnant. Okay. So and you're talking about Chris Sanchez. Chris yeah, Sanchez, yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. Okay. And um, so I told him well, as long as she behaves, okay, you know, if it's gonna make her he goes, Yeah, she's gonna she's okay, I think it's gonna be fine. So that's the last I heard of it. Um, the next interaction I had was I had um, the tech, which was Lori Aragon, come and tell me, H T you need to go to the bathroom. Um, so I went to the bathroom. There was quite a bit of blood in there. So um, this was after she came out. She went to the bathroom was in there for a long time. And um, Chris was um, telling me, you know, she won't come out. So I told him you need to get the key because the bathroom's locked. And so he told her he was going to get the key. And so she came out. But there was some blood in there. So I went to Dr. Vakas and told her, we, need, we have. I was worried that she did something to herself physically in the bathroom. And then I told Lori, call housekeeping, they gotta come clean this up. Um, which time she called Leela, was, who was on call for housekeeping. Um, then I was just sitting there, and then um, the next thing, Lori comes and goes, AC, hey, oh my God, you better come to the bathroom. And I go in the bathroom and she goes, something's in the trash can. I'm like, I looked in there, there's a clean liner. I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, pick it up. I pick it up, I can feel the weight. I knew then we had a serious problem. I immediately took, I just grabbed the trash can and went right across the hall and there's a trauma too. Um, I pulled, the liner was pulled out, but there was another trash bag in there in the bottom, but it was all kind of, it was rolled up. So I had to tear it apart. And then of course I saw the baby in there. So I pulled the baby out, got him on the bed, checked for signs of life. There was absolutely no life whatsoever. Um, I immediately came out of there after I did that, went into the room where she was performing the, she was performing the vaginal exam and I immediately told her, you have to come out now. And she came out and we went into trauma too and she reassessed the baby. At that time, between me and Chris and her, we determined, you know, there was no reason for us to begin any life saving. The baby was completely gone. Oh, so difficult to hear that all detailed by that hospital worker. Let's bring in to discuss this, someone with medical expertise that can help us break this down. Forensic pathologist Priya Banerjee is with us. Priya, thanks so much for joining us. I first want to ask you from a, a, a medical examiner coroner standpoint, is it going to be easy for the state in this case to prove that this was a live birth and then the death of a child versus stillborn, which we anticipate may be the defense here? That is the money question and is extremely hard to prove. Um, you really need to look at not only the baby as it normally formed, you know, uh, how far along she was, but you're looking for any you know, developmental abnormalities. And then really you want to see if it 
the body reacted to the outside world. And we look at that under the microscope, but, but those are very subtle changes. And oftentimes we end up being undetermined, meaning we can't tell even with all the testing we've done. And I'm speaking from experience having handled cases like this. Oh, wow. When you're hearing that interview that we just played, what's standing out to you? We've got the hospital staff worker kind of talking about the time period uh, that the defendant left the bathroom and it seems like not too long later they went in because they saw the blood and that the baby was wrapped up in this uh, in the trash bags in the liner there at the bottom of the trash can you know, we've seen stories where miraculously babies survive mm -hmm. falling being thrown into a dumpster we've seen that story here on court tv but it seems like in a relatively short period of time you have this death what's standing out to you when you hear that interview right so the good thing is the baby's body should not be decomposed. It should be relatively intact, um, fresh after birth, and that makes you know it better as an autopsy uh, time to be able to decipher changes. Um, obviously, this is so disturbing as a mother myself um, and obviously a pathologist. But I think the critical thing is what was she hiding? You know, she knew that she was pregnant. I, I just can't believe that she didn't know, having given birth at least. And then did anybody hear the baby cry? That's going to be a critical um, issue. Did she try to suffocate it with the bags? I, you know, obviously her statements are going to be suppressed. Um, and really that's where the investigation is going to come into play. I don't know if more staff were around other than these leadership staff that they're talking to. Mm, yeah, let's, uh, we're gonna talk about those statements because that's gonna be an important part mm -hmm. or not a part now of this yeah. case. But let's listen back to uh, the nurse talking about Treviso being bloody and being worried in this case. She came out of the restroom. Uh -huh. uh, there was a little trail of blood from the bathroom back to her room. Uh, we went to her room. I went to get her undressed. Uh, the doctor came in, explained to her that she had a miscarriage. Her and her mom had a back and forth about it. The doctor said she had a miscarriage? Yeah. Okay. She said it, like, it seems essentially like, I'm not sure the exact words. So it was a few months ago, but she said, you know, it seems that you've uh, suffered from a miscarriage, which didn't seem totally abnormal. I was seeking to see awful miscarriages before they're very bloody. Right. And so... Uh, was she bloody? Mm-hmm. Like and her was, legs? And yeah, she had blood all down her legs, and then there was, like, blood in the bathroom everywhere. She was just worried. She was asking me, like, what was going to happen. I told her, obviously, I did not know. Um, Is this when she told... When she, you found out she was worried about getting in trouble? Did she tell you anything, like... She didn't say anything about what had happened. Mm -hmm. She was just essentially worried that she was just going to get in trouble. Now, there were some statements that she made in front of doctors where she said, quote, I'm sorry, it came out of me. I didn't know what to do. Her defense said this is privilege because though it was said in the presence of police, her doctors were around and that's who she was speaking to. And Dr. Banerjee, can you speak to that privilege and whether or not you think that type of uh, comment should be used in a trial against her? Yeah, I, mean, I think we're extending beyond my area of expertise, but obviously I'm going to bring the medical slant. And that to me, when the presence of doctors seems like it's medical information, even if the police are present, um, I think if I had to be in the patient's mindset, that's what I think she was trying to communicate to the doctors. And so the defendant is the patient in this case. And that is a very interesting technicality that I'm not aware of. Um, you know, does HIPAA ap apply in this instance? But if it's allowed, I think that's very damning um, because she didn't tell the nurse after she got out of the room that she had delivered the baby, right? She's talking about more miscarriage, which I think isn't as far, the, far along as um, what we know, delivering a full-formed baby. So that, I think, is where the status of the, her statement is going to be critical.
Mm -hmm. uh, and who knows if she's going to take the stand to explain herself right. if this goes to a trial. Are you surprised that the labor pains didn't bring her to her knees? I mean, she she's running into the bathroom there. She doesn't call out for help. No one really hears a scream or anything. I don't know if that says anything about her resolve, but just your thoughts on the state of mind of this very young girl, 19 years old, who's going through a birth. I can only smile and say, as someone who's been there, uh, both with patients and myself, it's not easy. Um, so I think different people feel pain very differently. Uh, and maybe because of her fear, is she's able to suppress anything that she's truly wanting to say or scream out. I think the fear factor was really trumping everything. And you can see that she's running, but it is amazing with the contractions of delivery that she's not crippled in pain. She's not doubled over, you know, grabbing her stomach, anything like that. She really doesn't make any movements, you know, indications that her stomach is hurting her. Absolutely. Dr. Priya Banerjee, thank you so much for all of you your so expertise and weighing in on this case that we are continuing to follow. No doubt the state is going to use that as the motive, that fear you're talking about, the motive in this case.